Those pessimistic solutions was also the most original. If the monuments could not be saved from the lake, why not visit them underwater? A British architect suggested future visitors take a boat to a hollow concrete column inspired by offshore platforms. An elevator would then take them 50 meters below the surface to a watertight chamber. This glass-sided chamber would offer them an astonishing spectacle. The temples would be illuminated underwater by floodlights. The device could also have been used as a base for diving expeditions. But other aquatic visitors might have accompanied the tourists. A variant of this solution was to cover the monuments with a globe filled with clean water for better visibility. The idea of letting the temple be flooded by the Nile has advantages. It doesn't have to be moved and you can always dive down to visit it. But in the long run, this would lead to the erosion of the temple, which is made of sandstone. And sandstone is a friable rock. It's composed of cemented sand grains. A team of Italian engineers suggested cutting the temples out of the cliff and then using a system of hydraulic jacks to raise the monuments. An extremely slow and risky operation requiring excellent coordination. In an engineering firm in Europe, it might have seemed technically feasible to cut out the temple, dig underneath it and use hydraulic jacks to move it 60 meters higher up. But the fact is, the site is in the desert. Such high-precision work would have meant bringing in a huge amount of equipment. The team would have had to be perfectly coordinated to lift the temple without breaking it. Another solution was to take advantage of the rising water to gradually lift the temples onto a huge barge that could support their weight. The most realistic solution for saving the Abu Simbel temples was inspired by what threatened them, create another dam to protect them from the water. Based on the dam being built at Aswan, this structure would be 300 meters wide at the base and over 60 meters high. In 1963, more experts arrived in Abu Simbel. No technical solution had yet been chosen for the rescue operation, and time was running out. The valley would soon be flooded. But the reality on the ground was very different to what the Western engineers had imagined. They had to take into account the location of Egypt's far south a remote region with no airport or proper roads.